Hi, my name is Austin and I work for the University of Oklahoma uh, doing IT work for the Parking Services Office. Um, I have been teaching myself pro programming for the last three years and so I've decided to title this talk Seven Tips from One Self-Learner to Another. Over the last three years of teaching myself, I've learned a lot of lessons, and so I hope to provide a different perspective than you would uh, normally hear. Um, I'm going to be talking to you from someone who is very much in the middle of their own uh, path forward uh, through programming. Um, I'm not a developer yet, but I have managed to land a job in IT uh, with no previous experience, and I've learned a lot of lessons uh, along the way. So before I get into those lessons, I'd like to kind of give you a little tour of what the last three years have been and how I got to where I'm at now. Uh, so my interest in programming really began as a high school student. Uh, like most teenagers, I spent a lot of my time playing video games and browsing the internet, and I was really intrigued by the ability of programming to seemingly do anything with your computer. Um, I fantasized about making my own video games, about making my own websites or programs to uh, impress my friends. And so I did what most people do, and I Googled it. How do I become a programmer? Well, after bouncing around from tutorial to website to blog, I quickly became confused. Um, I started to view programming as this black box you needed a degree in computer science to open because there were hundreds of languages out there, and it seemed like for every single one there was one person who said why this one was great and uh, someone else who said this one was bad. Um, and for every tutorial out there, they did a great job bringing you up to that beginner level of understanding of the language, but really seemed to taper out when it came time to transition from beginner to intermediate. And so I became really frustrated and confused and eventually just gave up on those uh, dreams that I had. Well, fast forward a number of years until three years ago, at the age of 26, I was uh, in the gym having a conversation with a buddy of mine who's a professional developer, and I asked him how he got into his current line of work. And I was absolutely shocked to find out that he had no formal training and did not have a degree in computer science. Uh, in college, as a student, he had a job in the computer lab of the Language Learning Center, just at the welcome desk, and he had a lot of downtime and started tinkering with CSS and HTML um, and actually uh, got permission from a supervisor to make a few small modifications to their website. Well, that built his confidence, and so he learned more. And by the end of the year, he had made enough modifications to have something truly impressive. And that was what allowed him to land a job at the university library working on their website. And that uh, gave him the experience to get his current job as a professional full-time developer. Now, at this point, my jaw was just about on the floor because until this point, I had looked at programming as something that was for everyone else, but not for me. I had completely resigned to that fact. But for the first time, I was being told that I could do it too. That if I put in the hard work and the dedication, that I could become a developer. And that blew my mind. So from that day forward, for the next three years, I've been teaching myself programming and loving every single minute of it. And although I'm not a developer yet, I, I have obtained a position in IT with no prior experience. And the best part about my job is the ability to use program to improve my life and the lives of my coworkers. Um, I've been able to automate away a lot of the boring tasks that we all have to go through in our desk jobs, not only for myself, but for my coworkers. And more than that, it's given me a sense of identity. I'm a programmer. And more than that, a sense of community. Being part of Techlahoma has surrounded me with tons of wonderful people who are incredibly gracious and kind. And my life is so much better because of it. And so I my hope in this talk is to provide you motivation to continue forward on the learning path. And in, and in this talk, to provide you some tips, uh, some lessons that I've learned along the way that I hope will help you in your journey. And so to begin, lesson one is that programming is hard. Um, from now on, you should equate the word programming with problem solving in your mind. If there wasn't a problem, 
there wouldn't need to be a program to solve it. And unfortunately, most easy problems are hard to solve, especially when it comes down to coding solutions. The good news is, is that I have 100% confidence in every single one of you and your ability to overcome every single challenge that comes your way if you, if you focus and put forward the effort and the dedication. I have 100% confidence you can overcome every challenge. Uh, lesson number two, learning to program is difficult. Um, there are going to be times where you feel overwhelmed, inadequate, confused, frustrated. Your brain will hurt. You will want to give up because you will feel like there is no clear path forward. It is a difficult journey, but I can tell you that it's worth every single minute. And there's nothing, there's nothing better than overcoming a challenge that had you stumped, that was difficult, that you thought was impossible to solve. It is a magical moment, and they will come again and again and again as long as you keep driving forward. Lesson number three, commit to learning the foundational principles of programming. It's one thing to learn how to program, to write a language, to use a language. It's another thing to understand what's going on in the background. Um, although there are hundreds of languages out there, um, many of them are based upon the same core principles. You're going to encounter the same words, the same uh, concepts over and over and over again, and it's important that you learn them. Uh, concepts like polymorphism, object-oriented programming, recursion, uh, pass-by uh, value versus pass-by reference. These are all things that you're going to encounter in each language, and if you really understand what's going on, it makes learning and understanding other languages in the future so much easier. Um, number four, code every single day. And this is something that I really struggle with because life gets busy. I'm working full time. By the time I come home, I'm exhausted. The last thing I want to do is look at another computer monitor. But it's important that you do. Um, and when I say code every day, I don't just mean listen to a podcast or read a book or learn something new every day, but push those keys and write some code. Even if it's just uh, some random functions, um, some random strings of code, just solidify the concepts, the concepts that, that you've heard of. Um, work with the methods that you learned. Make mistakes, break things. These are fantastic opportunities to learn. And if you do this every day, your progression will skyrocket. And trust me on that. It is imperative that you program every single day and practice what you learn. And along the same lines, uh, number five, tip number five, is save everything. No matter how insignificant the code that you wrote, even if all you did was make mistakes and your program never worked, make a comment at the top explaining what you did. doesn't have to be anything fancy. These are notes for you. But I can't tell you how many times in the past, hundreds, that I have wished that I would have saved a piece of code because I spent an hour learning it. I spent an hour of making mistakes and I finally conquered it. But one month later, I've completely forgotten. And if I just had those few lines of code, I wouldn't have to learn it all over again. I could jog my memory and move forward. So please do yourself a favor and save everything with a brief comment. Um, number, number six, join a community of programmers. My guess is that uh, if you're watching this, you're already part of Techlahoma, which is a great step. I probably spent the first, uh, the first two years of my journey doing this 100% by myself. I didn't know another coder personally at all, and it was tough. When you encounter roadblocks, it's so difficult to figure out what the next step is uh, when there's no one around you. It's so difficult to get the motivation to keep pushing forward when no one else is in the trenches with you. And so if you're with a community, if you're with Techlahoma, then you have those people that have been there and done that and can provide you the path forward. Or at the very least, they're down there in the trenches with you and can give you encouragement to move forward. It is imperative that you surround yourself with these people. And Techlahoma is full of incredibly kind people um, that, I, that I have, I've been so impressed with the community. And even more than getting something from the community, I think probably one of the most valuable experiences I've had in my life was when I volunteered to be a coach at the She Codes Django 
event where we uh, helped women develop their own website using the Django framework. And the greatest thing I got from that was all the joy that I had in learning programming and overcoming challenges was helping somebody and watching those aha moments as they overcame those challenges. It was incredibly life-changing for me, and I can't wait for the next opportunity to give back the same things that people have given to me. So please, I encourage you to reach out and do anything you can to help other people just like you trying to learn and get ahead. Last but not least, uh, step seven. And if you can take one thing away from this, really, this is the one thing that I hope that you uh, keep, and that is pick a language and stick to it. Um, in coding, out of three years, I've switched languages three times, and every time I basically set myself back to square one. And if I had just stuck to that first language, I would have been where I am now in at least half the time. Um, like I mentioned earlier, learning to program is difficult. There are mile-high milestones. There are mile-long deserts where it feels like there's no information, no clear path forward, and it's easy. It's so easy to just give up and move on to the next language because there's always a tutorial to get you through the beginner stage, and it's easy because the accomplishments come easy. It's interesting. It's fast. Um, but if you never get to the intermediate and advanced stage, you'll never make it towards that developer finish line. And so you really need to lean on your community to get you through from that beginner to that intermediate path. Stick to a language. Commit to it. And even if it isn't the language that you end up losing, using in the long run, it will make it so much easier to move on to that next language that you end up using. Trust me. Take the time. And when I say uh, advancing to the point of proficiency in a language, what I'm referring to is the ability to use that language to accomplish a variety of tasks, to understand the language um, uh, intimately enough to use the variety of tools that it offers to solve a variety of real-world problems. And if you commit to that, your life will be so much easier. And so to wrap this up, what I hope you get from this, more than just these bullet points, more than just the stories I've, I've given you, is the confidence to move forward knowing that the struggle is not in vain, that there is a path forward, and that you can do it. I have 100% confidence that I, that I will make it as a developer. I will not give up until it happens. And I want you to be that as well. I want you to have that same attitude. So I want to open myself up to, and be available for you if you ever need encouragement. I am sure that I cannot solve your problems for you. Uh, my knowledge is very limited and I'm still moving forward, but I'm very much still in the trenches with you and would love to have a chance to speak to you and work with you because every minute, every struggle, every success makes this journey worth it. And I'm going to see it through the end and I want to see you there with me. So please do not ever hesitate to reach out to me. One of the best ways to get a hold of me is through my email, austin.w.keaton at gmail.com, and that's Keaton spelled K-E-E-T-O-N. Or um, if you haven't already, you should join the Teklahoma Slack channel at slack.teklahoma.org, and you can find me in my handle, um, Austin. So I encourage you to reach out to me, reach out to other people in the community, show up to events, volunteer to help, get involved, and keep driving forward because you can do it, and I want to see you at that finish line. Thank you guys so much for having me do this talk. Um, it's been a true honor. I look forward to meeting all of you.